Good morning, good morning, Woodlawn family. How are you guys doing today? I am so excited to be with you guys on this awesome Wednesday morning. It is a little bit chilly. Uh, it is a little bit cold outside, but spring is here, and uh, I couldn't be more thrilled. I know that my children are absolutely thrilled. Um, they have been playing outside any chance that they get, and uh, it's, like I said, it's exciting times here in Ohio as we inch towards summer, and uh, it's going to be a great year. Uh, let's just see who's hopping on here. Good morning, Miss Heather. How are you doing? Uh, Angie and Dave Brown, good morning, and uh, you guys are fantastic people. Abby Newsbaum, good morning. Marty and Kathy James, good morning. Uh, David, good morning. Ed and Pat Nelson, good morning. I'm just going to keep going online because this is just awesome. Uh, Gabrielle, good morning. Tony, my man, good morning. Again, we are praying for you, Tony. We love you. I'm so happy that we were able to see you this past weekend. And uh, you are an incredible person. And uh, so I know that God is going to keep healing you. Peggy, good morning. Emily Hitting, good morning. Miss Tammy, good morning. And uh, Mary Delretto, good morning. And uh, Glenda, good morning. Courtney James, good morning. And uh, Ellen, good morning. Uh, if there's anybody that helps up, hops on, good morning to you. And uh, might want to turn off music in the background. It's overtaking Zach. And uh, so, yes, we're on it. Thank you, Miss Heather. And uh, But everybody that is hopping on and is on right now, good morning. And uh, we are so glad to see you guys here today. And uh, so anyways, I just want to hop on and, and just say uh, before we start here this morning that uh, we had water baptisms uh, this past weekend. And let me tell you what, that service was amazing. Uh, I'm not just saying that just to use the word amazing. It truly was fantastic, outstanding, and uh, God was absolutely in that service. And uh, we had a, an incredible Sunday morning uh, services, the three services we had uh, was was full. There was life. Um, it was an, an, a great time, great services, as well as the online service. And uh, God was there, and we finished our incredible Unstuck series that we've been in. And uh, we're hopping into a new series this weekend, and we'll get into that in just a minute. Um, but then we rolled into Sunday night into our water baptism service. And I'll tell you what, I don't know about you, but if you are hopping on and you are there, uh, would you just let people know, maybe that weren't there, how exciting it was and how awesome it was. We had 40 people get water baptized, 40 people. And uh, as, as Pastor said, we dunked them. I mean, it was, we were moving fast. It was amazing. Uh, just, just to see how many people got, got water baptized, uh, within an hour. I mean, it was fantastic. Um, but the heart was, was so amazing just to see these people that were coming in there and just to see the tears, um, just welling up in their eyes and, and to see the motion. Um, you know, there's a few times I'm not going to lie, uh, that I cried. Um, I remember specifically, um, there was a few times pastor Andrew, um, being one of them, uh, with his, with his niece, Elizabeth, and, uh, she began to start crying and, uh, <laughs> and pastor Andrew began to start crying. And I remember that, um, that <laughs> Carter, uh, he's on our staff here and he was, he was in front of me and taking pictures and he started to cry, but I didn't know it. And I was, start, I was crying and he looked and he looked back at me and we both were crying and I'm like, stop it, dude, stop crying. You know, I was just, I was just like, stop it. And I look back and like three of the worship team members were crying. We were all crying because of pastor Andrew who started crying. So I'm just saying, if you want to know why we're all crying, it was pastor Andrew. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, anyways, but there were some other people that really just choked us up, but it was so so amazing to you, not only to see the adults, but the children that were getting water baptized. Um, it, it was it was it was a beautiful sight just to, you know, I know some of them were nervous, but the fact was, is that their heart was so pure and they were coming in there and uh, and, and just getting water baptized when they were coming up. Um, I know Pastor Andrew um, and his wife, Jen, were even telling us how amazing it is to be behind the stage and when the people were coming out of the water baptism and coming down the stairs, the emotion that they had and the joy that they had, 
Um, it was just a really beautiful time. So again, to everybody who made the decision to get water baptized, we congratulate you. You guys are awesome. And to everybody who joined in on this celebration, thank you so much for being there. And uh, we have something else that is just as exciting as that. That is literally, it seemed like it was far away, and then all of a sudden it's like here. And that is Easter at Woodlawn. And uh, we are so excited about that. So that's August 16th and August, uh, not August, April 16th and April 17th. Don't come in August 16th. There'll be nothing going on in that moment potentially. But April 16th and April 17th, we have Easter. If you're excited about Easter, would you give us some thumbs up or some hearts or throw something in the comments? Um, Easter at Woodlawn is going to be fantastic, amazing this year, off the chain, uh, as we say, egg sighting. And why are we saying egg sighting is because we are dropping a hundred thousand Easter eggs out of a helicopter. And uh, if you have never got to experience that before, let me tell you, it is something truly exciting. And uh, it, it's amazing to be a part of, to see the kids' faces when the eggs start coming out of the helicopter and they start pouring out and they're all like, yeah! And, and they're they're running onto the field and uh, and to see the parents smiling and the kids smiling and uh, they, they got their baskets full. Uh, it's, it's an incredible time. So we have four drops uh, that we're going to be doing this year, four egg drops, and uh, we have four services. Uh, we have two on Saturday, two on Sunday. So we have a lot of great things. Um, like I said, this is one of the biggest things that we do here at Woodlawn is Easter at Woodlawn. And uh, not only that, but we need your help. So if you have not signed up yet, we would love for you to jump in on this great opportunity. And uh, you can sign up uh, at the Welcome Center as well as online. And uh, I believe that we are looking for uh, around 200, if that's right, Pastor Andrew, 200 people to jump in uh, and partner with us and join in together for this exciting time. So if you have not signed up yet, I promise you, there is plenty of room, but not only that, there's a great opportunity to be able to show the love of Jesus, be the light of the world. Um, like I said, there's a lot of people that would never come to church on, on a regular weekend that will come to church uh, for this egg drop and will come to church because it's Easter time. And we have an opportunity to show the love of Christ and be an example and uh, really just, just show them the compassion of Jesus and to where they might actually come back. And uh, so we would love for you to join us for this exciting time. And uh, like I said, April 16th and 17th. And we can't wait to see you guys here Easter at Woodlawn. And uh, as we are, uh, thought, I thought I was going to sneeze there for a second, sorry. But as we are uh, getting closer to Easter and as we finished up this incredible Unstuck series uh, that we're in, um, pastors, one of Pastor's final points um, that he was on, it said, I will finish strong. And when I was th when he said that, it really, really resonated in my heart um, when he said that in, in this in this final message that he did in the Unstuck series. And like I said, point number three was it said, I will finish strong. And when he said that, it just immediately made me think of how Jesus finished strong for you and I on Calvary Hill and how we're getting closer to Easter and how it is so amazing to be reminded of that. And when I was thinking about finishing strong, it was it made me think about, though, at the same time, how exciting it is to start something new, right? It's exciting to start something new. Even though we may initially have some fears, uh, I think that in general, um, when I was thinking about it, that we generally look forward, though, to starting something new. You know, often, um, you know, for me, I've ventured out into new phases of my life. I still remember when I think back, way early on uh, about starting third grade, okay? And I, I remember um, I did some homeschooling up until that point, and I remember starting third grade, and I remember walking that classroom and how terrified I was, but at the same time, how excited I was. You know, I remember when I uh, first got married, and, and on that day, and I remember that my, my hands were sweating, and I was outside, which don't do outside weddings. They're, it's hot, and everybody sweats, and it's, it's terrible, um, but do inside weddings if you get a chance, unless it's beautiful and you have a beautiful day. But for us, it was so hot, and I remember sweating, um, and I remember how nervous I was, but then I remember how excited I was to think, oh my goodness, like I'm starting this, this is exciting, and, uh, and it really was exciting, it still is exciting. And I remember 
Um, the first time I, we have four children. I remember the first time that I held my first daughter, um, Kaylee. And I remember just the overwhelming emotion of, oh my goodness, I, I'm starting a family. I, I'm starting and, I, and I'm a dad now. And like the emotions that came behind um, just that excitement. But how exciting it was to think it's like here, here's something new. Here, here's something um, that I get to do. And just all through the phases of life, how exciting it was to start something new, right? A new venture, a new project, uh, a new journey. And I truly believe that it breeds just deep excitement in our hearts. And in life, we love to start some stuff new, right? And why don't you can even put in the comments below maybe some things that you're starting new even now in your life, um, whether it be dating, marriage. Right, joining, a, a, maybe starting a new job, uh, maybe you're starting college, maybe you're jumping in and you're you're starting uh, the, in the gym, right? Maybe a business, uh, maybe you're starting in a new ministry opportunity, a creative project opportunity, or maybe you're even starting a family. But whatever it may be, I know that we all generally look forward to beginning something new because it starts and it breeds excitement in our heart. And I want to tell you that starting something new and starting is terrific, but like Jesus showed us, starting something new is terrific, but there's something more powerful than starting, and that is finishing. And not only finishing, but finishing strong. And finishing strong is a reoccurring theme throughout the Bible, and, that, and, and one that we must truly implement in our lives as Christians if we are to run this race with endurance. How many of you guys remember the rabbit and the turtle story, right? Most of us know it as, if we remember, the tortoise and the hare story, right? If you remember in that story, the hare was making fun of the tortoise for being slow. And the tortoise responded and said, you know what, that's fine, you can call me slow, but here's the deal, that I know that I can finish sooner and I will beat you in this race. And the hare began to laugh and he accepted the challenge from the tortoise. The hare <laughs> thought it was ridiculous, but he said, let's do it anyways, right? And so as the race began, the hare, as it says in the story, he just took off, right? He was speeding, he was running, he took off, the tortoise is slow, and after speeding to a massive lead, the hare became overconfident, and he took a nap. He began the race, he started well, he took off running, and he took a nap. But the tortoise continued. He didn't stop. He didn't take a nap. It says in the story that he remained steady and persistent, never giving up. When, he, when the hare woke up, he tried to make up for his nap and begin the race again. But it was too late. The tortoise had won and the race was over. You know, from a biblical perspective, this story contains some grain of truth. And that is that the fact that many people become tired, distracted, and fail to finish strong, just like the hare did. Look what this quote says by Basilia Schlink. It says, Do not be lazy. Run each day's race with all your might, so that at the end of the day you will receive the victory wreath from God. Keep on running. Even when you have fallen down, pick yourself up and keep running. The victory wreath is, is won by him who does not stay down, go to sleep, but keep moving. But always get up again, grasp the banner of faith, and keep on running in the assurance that Jesus is victor. And you know, as Christians, we are called to do everything as though we are doing it for the Lord, right? And while we're here on this earth, the things we do, whether it's in our studies, careers, relationships, we are to do it with the best of our ability, and God is calling you and I to finish what he's asking us to do. And so how do we apply that to our life, right? How do we finish strong like Jesus did on Calvary? And when I was thinking again just with Easter and just the overwhelming thought about the simple fact that literally, think about this for you and I today and to remind us how amazing it is that literally Jesus was born on this earth, right? And, and he didn't sin one time. I mean, I sin like 50 times a day, it feels like sometimes, right? I mean, I, I fail so many times, and I'm thinking, he literally went through this life and didn't fail one time. And he was amazing from beginning to end. But I think about the fact that literally, place yourself in, in his position for a minute. 
that he literally knew that you and I still got a choice, but he put himself out there and he said, God, I'm going to do the will of my father. I, I'm going to do what you asked me to do. I'm going to finish strong and put yourself in the position where he literally took the lashes for you and I, right? And he took the crown of thorns for you and I, and he took the spear in the side for you and I, and he was mounted to the cross for you and I. And he, and, he, and he knew that if he didn't do that, that you and I would be separated from him forever. And so and, and he wanted to make sure that that wasn't the case. And so he wanted to make sure that he finished strong. But how do we finish strong like Jesus? And how is Jesus able to finish strong? And so I want to give you three points today, just real quickly before we leave here today, just how we can apply what Jesus did to our own life and how he was able to keep the course and what he started he was able to finish. And the first thing is, is Jesus gained physical, emotional, and mental strength to run his race to the finish because he kept his eye on the prize. So for you and I today, how we're able to finish strong is we have to keep our eye on the prize. We have to keep our eye on the finish line. We have to keep our eyes and our heart turned towards what God is asking us to do. Because perhaps today you might be, you might be caught in a web of having a great start, but now the trials, obstacles, and hardships that you're facing are causing you to want to quit and walk away. And I just want to encourage you today, if you're feeling like that, if you're literally on the brink of just saying, you know, I feel like I just, I, I can't do this anymore, and I'm going to, I'm going to throw in the towel, right? I'm going to quit, and, and I'm just, I'm going to give up. It was fun while it lasted. I encourage you to keep on going through the trials, through through the through the challenges that you are facing today. Because if you keep your eye on the prize, just like Jesus did, you'll be reminded that not only did Jesus finish, but there were saints before you throughout the Bible, right? They were able to finish ahead of you. And let me tell you what, they're cheering you on. They're encouraging you. And you might feel like that you are in a dark time. You might be feeling like that you are lonely, but know that you are not alone. Know that Jesus is right there with you, but you just have to keep your eye on the prize. Look what it says in Galatians 6, 9. It says, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap. You and I will reap a harvest if we do not give up, if we do not stop, if we not become overconfident like the hare and just fall asleep, right? Be like the tortoise. And I never thought I'd say that. Be like a turtle, right? And and just stay steadfast. Stay strong. Keep moving to that finish line no matter what. And keep your eye on the prize. And I want to encourage someone today that do not only concentrate on the short-term pleasures, right? Do not only just concentrate on just the short little wins, but truly also at the same time, be focused on the important thing, and that is the finish line, right? You can be happy with the short-term wins. I think it's important. But I also think it's important to remind yourself, like, you know what? Celebrate the short wins, but stay focused on the finish line. So point number one is, like I said, is make sure for you and I today that we keep our eye on the prize no matter what. And then number two is Jesus was able to finish because he was nourished by his father's words. He desired to do the will of the father and he had a vision. He understood that one day, that once his assignment was complete, that be, he would be reunited with his father sitting at his right hand. And not only that, he understood that by dying on the cross, that no more, one day that for you and I, no more fear, no more tears, no more pain, no more death for you and I, because he was able to finish. So he was nourished by his father's words. He was nourished by the fact that he found his strength in his father. And look what it says in Philippians 4.13. It says, I can do, you and me can do all things through him who gives us strength. So today, for example, you can be nourished by the fact that God is saying that I will give you strength, that you can do all things that I'm asking to you to do. I will give you strength. And how many times throughout scripture do you find those, those powerful passages where Jesus and God is just speaking to you, to encourage you, to lift you up, to remind you that you don't have to be fearful or worry or doubt or stress, right? And, and, and the power that comes behind the words that God is saying that he is your strength, that he is your provider. 
that that he will he will make you the head and not the tail and so many times through scripture he is there's power behind it and just like jesus for you and i today in order to finish strong is we have to be nourished and we have to focus in on the word of god we have to focus in on the promises of god and what he is saying and if you do that just like it says in philippians you can do all things through him who strengthens you if you do that you will finish strong because we do not have to go about trials on our own when we turn to christ he gives us the strength to do well but to go back to the fact to think of that jesus wanted to do the father's will he wanted to do what god wanted not ultimately what he wanted but he wanted to do what god wanted and that is point number three is jesus desired to fulfill the desire of the father's heart how he's able to finish point number three is one of one of the ways was jesus desired to fulfill the desire of the father's heart when we desire above all else to do the father's will we will be fueled to finish what we start and then finish strong we bear witness to others that god is real so you see for you and i today one of the reasons not only besides keeping our eyes on the prize and not only can we be nourished by the words of the father but for you and i today another way that we can finish strong is is to make sure that we say god i want to do your will i want to do your way and that's what jesus did above all else he wanted to do the father's will and for example you know when you're facing hardship in your marriage right or on the days that money is running low and the bills keep mounting up because let me tell you what i've been there before i i have been there I have been there moments where it's my marriage where it's challenging. I've been there before where money is really tight. And uh, and I remember even when we were first married, just how tight uh, money was, right? And and, and how it, we were just so stressed so many times. And I remember working two, three jobs sometimes. And, uh, you know, some way still, though, God got us through that. But you have to just say in your life, you're like, listen, Lord, I know that sometimes a marriage is challenging or maybe your marriage is challenging right now. You know, for you, like I said, money might be running low and the bills might be, you know, uh, mounting up. And, uh, you know, maybe you're into a business uh, venture right now and you're starting a business and maybe you're having some challenges and things aren't profitable. Or maybe you're in ministry right now and, and you are um, in a ministry position and in your ministry position, um, whether it be as a lead pastor or maybe, um, you know, within your department, your growth seems stunted right now. Whatever the case may be, keep holding on to the promises of God and keep doing the will of the Father. Keep doing it with a smile on your face. Keep doing it with joy in your heart. Keep doing it with trusting Jesus. And I promise you, not only will uh, you finish the race strong, but people will. People are watching and they're realizing, they're, they're focusing in. They're saying, you know what? Even though he's going through a tough situation, he's doing the will of the Father. He's finishing what God is calling him to do, and people will notice that. They'll notice that, and they'll, they'll see that you're trusting God through the entire process. But you, your heart should say, you know what, God? I don't want to fulfill what my fleshly desires wants to fulfill. I want to fulfill what you're calling me to do. And, and you have to do that with a surrendered heart. But that's how Jesus was able to finish. He said, not my will, but your will, Father. And that, at the end, what did he say with his last breath? He said, it is finished. And because of his faithfulness and because of his goodness, what happened? He rose again on the third day. He came back to life, right? He fulfilled what God asked him to do. And he came back to life. Now he is in heaven, reigning forever and ever and ever. But he finished what he started. And let me tell you what, just like Jesus he understands. Listen, Jesus understands when you and I are facing trials each day, right? He, he went through those same things that you and I are going through. There's so many times through the Bible where you see the, the trials that Jesus faced. I mean, here's the son of God and he faced, he had so many opportunities to throw in the towel. He had so many opportunities to quit, but he finished the race and he kept his eyes on the prize. He kept his heart and his mind close to God. He focused in on God's words. He, sometimes some of us need to focus on God's words more than man's word. We need to focus in on what God is saying about us, not what men are saying about us. We need to focus on what God is saying about us, not what the enemy is saying about us. 
We need to listen in to God's word. And then two, our heart should be, God, we want your will to be done. God, I want to finish this race for you. God, I want to serve you. God, I want to worship you. God, I want to lift you up. God, I want people to see you through me, Lord. Everything that we should do in this in this world, we should say that we want God's will, not our will. But that's what he did. Above all else, he wanted the Father's will. And look what it says right here as we're closing. In John 4, 34, it says, My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish the work. And then in Hebrews 10, 11, it says, no discipline seems pleasant at the time, right? No discipline following through sometimes is challenging, right? It says, but no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. But later, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. So what is that verse saying? It's saying that sometimes it's not very exciting to finish. Sometimes there's a cost as we are going to that finish line. But if you finish and you endure, he says it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained in it. So whatever you're facing today, I encourage you, do not stop. Keep following through just like Jesus did as we are inching closer to Easter, right? And we have an, a great opportunity for you and I as a church to, to, to bless our community, right? We have a great opportunity to serve and to jump in, whether it be in the kids department or it could be out at the out of the field, right? Uh, dropping and, and picking up eggs and getting things set for the kids. It could be within the service. It could be greeting or serving coffee or whatever the case may be. But we have an opportunity to serve. We have an opportunity to bless people. We have an opportunity to help people. For some people, start their journey, right? And, but you and I have an opportunity to serve in God's kingdom. And I encourage you to jump in and help us as we get closer to Easter. But as you are on Easter Sunday sitting there, I encourage you just to remember, like, listen, Jesus finished. You and I can finish. You and I can, can go through this life, even though it's trying, even though there's trials. We can finish and we can do what God is asking us to do. And I encourage you, no matter what you're facing today, no matter challenges, trials, tribulation, whatever you're going through today, keep trusting God, finish what you start. And there's something powerful about that. Have you ever been in, in the situation where you start something and you finish it, right? And and just how, how, how proud you feel of yourself and how exciting you feel. I'm going to steal a little story from Pastor Andrew, uh, but he, he, he had a ceiling fan and he, he's smiling over there. I can see him moving, but he had a ceiling fan and that ceiling fan was in his house, in his living room and it was causing problems. One, it was blocking the TV, which is inappropriate in every way. And, but it was causing problems, right? And it was, and it was just not what they wanted. And pastor Andrew was like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I am going to change out this ceiling fan. Okay. And he, and he did it and he changed it out. And he was telling us, uh, Carter and myself, just how proud he felt of himself, right? And you and I are the same way. When we, when we look at something and we start it and we finish it, there's something powerful and inside you, you just feel this, this accomplishment. So I encourage you, even though it might be hard, finish what you start and do the will of the Father and do those three things. Keep your eye on the prize, focus in on God's word and what it says about you. And not only that, above all else, uh, encourage yourself to do the will of the Father no matter what. And uh, if you do those things, I promise you, as you're finishing your race, it'll be a little bit easier. But do that and focus in on God, okay? Let's pray today. Lord, we just love you, God, and I just thank you, Lord, for what you did for us on Calvary. God, I thank you for, um, Lord, the fact that you died on the cross for our sins, God, that you took our place, that you went above and beyond, Lord, that you finished what you set out to do, God. Lord, I just thank you that we have that same opportunity, Lord. We have that same opportunity to be an example for you, Lord, for people to see our lives and, and how we live them, God. And, and ultimately, Lord, that we, as long as we strive for you and, and we finish the task that you asked us to do, God, that people will see that, Lord. Lord, I, I pray that 
Lord, that some people are going through some really challenging things today, God, in, in their marriage and in their finances, Lord, and their health and their relationships, God. Whatever the case may be, Lord, there's some people that are going through some really challenging spots in their life, Lord. It started off great, but now it's challenging. God, I pray that as they are going through those challenges, God, that they don't quit, that they don't throw in the towel, that they don't, you know, sit down and stay down, God. But they maybe they've they've they were going through something, but they pick themselves up and they keep going, God. But they don't stop, Lord, and they, they keep their eyes on the prize, Lord, and they see that you're gonna get them through this, God. Lord, I thank you for what you did for us, Lord, as we are getting closer to Easter, God. I thank you for dying on the cross for our sins, Lord. I thank you that you saw value in us and worth in us, Lord. I thank you that you love us beyond our mistakes, God. And I just thank you, Lord, and help us as 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 Christians, Lord, to be example of you and help us to finish strong, Lord, what we start. And we love you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, not only for Easter, but even this weekend, I just encourage you to join us. God is doing some great things here at Woodlawn Church, and we always want you to be a part of it. So this weekend, we have three services again every weekend. We have 8 a.m., 9.30 a.m., and 11 a.m., and uh, we'd love for you to see it. Maybe you can't make it in person this weekend. Maybe you're traveling. Maybe you have something going on, um, and you can hop on. We have a 9.30 a.m. awesome live stream experience uh, that we'd love for you to join us uh, with. And not only that, like I said, Easter's right around the corner. If you have not signed up yet, uh, there'll be opportunities for you to sign up this weekend as well as online like i said you can hop on and do that and we encourage you to jump in with us we love it when you partner with us and again congratulation to the 40 people that got water baptized like i said we we are proud of you guys and uh let's give them some hearts and likes and congratulations but we love you guys we will see you guys this weekend as we start a new series i'm not going to give it away yet don't want to steal pastor matt's thunder but we're starting a new series this weekend we want you guys to join us we love you guys Take care, everybody. Have a great day. God bless.